Here he is, the noisy boy himself. He does not want to be held right now because he wants to go run around the house. All right, uh, back on to the topic. Um, I guess I don't need my headphones because there's nothing playing. Um, I did, uh, why are you rubbing on my leg? I did want to talk about some things on my channel that, uh, I guess I don't explain very often. Um, this is a different video than what I regularly do. Um, hopefully y'all can hear me all right and see me all right. My webcam is very bad. <laughs> this is my old laptop. I turned it back on just to record this. Um, basically what I'm getting at is I'm autistic. Um, I was diagnosed with autism when I was just before I turned 18, or actually no, just before I turned 17, um, but I knew I was autistic since I was like 13. Uh, autism is not contagious, it is something that you are born with, something that happens while you're still developing in the womb. Uh, I don't see it as a negative. Uh, but I did want to explain some things that go on in my videos, sort of. Um, you notice I have a lisp and a bit of a stutter and sometimes I just stop talking altogether and just have big pauses. Um, that's because of it. Uh, I also have motor control problems with hand-eye coordination. Uh, so that's why I'm not very good at certain games. Uh, you'll notice, you'll hear this a lot in the background. I don't know if it's picking that up. I have ticks. I have to click my middle mouse button periodically. I go like this with my thumb. Uh, I have to mess with my necklace, my earring, and my hair. Uh, I go like this when I'm nervous. I like this when I'm happy. Um, so the way it affects me in my daily life, I suppose, uh, I am very routine oriented. I need a routine and I need to stick to that routine. And if the routine is messed up, there's going to be a problem. But at the same time, I hate routines. <laughs> so you get that clash. Um, I have special interests. Uh, basically what a special interest is, is when an autistic person latches on to something, whether it's uh, media or uh, like an, a, separate, a specific type of animal or a book series or a person or a genre like electronics or trains is a very common one um and basically then their brain that's all they can think about like constantly and that's all they want to talk about and so all they do is research that special interest um it's a common stereotype for autistic people to have a special interest move to a different room uh because i don't want to wake up my family um so they're saying it was a very hopefully the sound is in here. It's a very common thing uh, for autistic people to have a special interest in trains because trains are something that are given to a small child and then that small child latches on to that because they're autistic and some people, some autistic people when they have a special interest they keep that same special interest for the rest of their life and some autistic people keep it for a few months, a few years, some autistic people that lasts a few days. Um, my special interests typically last around five years, I would say. When I was young, I had a special interest in The Wizard of Oz and in dinosaurs. Uh, some autistic people just have one special interest, some have multiple, and I tend to have multiple. But generally, they're in the same bubble, uh, which I'll explain in a minute.
So when I was a kid, I really liked The Wizard of Oz. I knew everything about it. I'd read all the books. I was a child prodigy, so I was reading college level books at like age six. Um, I was six years old in the third grade, actually. Um, or I believe I was seven in the third grade. Uh, but when I tested to get into school, I tested far above where other kids my age were supposed to be. Uh, so that led to a lot of bullying <laughs> because I didn't know I was autistic. My mom didn't know that I was autistic. My teachers didn't know. Um, so then after third grade, I was homeschooled. Um, when I was eight or nine, I believe, I started to have a special interest in Legos and architecture and I wanted to be an architect and all my reports in school were about Legos and architecture and stuff because I was homeschooled and my mom didn't care what the report was on as long as it met all the guidelines in the textbook. Um, when I was 10, I believe, I watched Star Wars for the first time and instantly fell in love. I was a huge Star Wars fanatic for years until I was probably 15 or 16. Um, I have all the Star Wars novels from the 90s and early 2000s and like I mean all of them and I still own them. I have probably around 200 Star Wars novels. Um, they're in my room on my bookshelf and in my window. Um, Part of the reason why my special interest in Star Wars went away um, was due to Disney. I, my whole life, have never really liked Disney, and I was really upset when they bought over Star Wars and they didn't follow the plot line that the books did. It felt like I was betrayed. I was in full Jedi cosplay that I had sewn myself in the theater on opening day. And I would pre-ordered my tickets like a year in advance. I was so excited. Um, and then I saw the movie and I was disappointed. Like, crushed. Because I had all these characters that for me were like my best friends or my siblings even. And seeing that they would never exist and then that they aren't considered canon or real anymore it was difficult. I mean, I know that I'm just talking about Star Wars, but you gotta keep in mind that as a special interest, this is your whole life, basically. Um, when I was younger, probably from like the ages of six to, I want to say, 17, maybe, I had a sm special interest in the Bible. Um, I'm Christian and was raised Christian and I always liked it. There were dinosaurs in the Bible so younger me liked it and yeah. Um, but for the longest time I was a kid who could pretty much recite the whole thing cover to cover and I still can recite many long passages just not quite as easily. Um, so yeah. Um, so now about the whole bubble thing, uh, when I got into Star Wars novels, I got into reading a lot more. I've always been a big reader. Um, at the library, my family has checked out more books uh, than any other family in the county, <laughs> uh, which is pretty amazing. It's something like upwards of 20,000 books, I believe. Um, I was always a big reader though, but I read The Hobbit uh, for the first time when I was probably 11 or 12, and I fell in love with The Lord of the Rings, and my love of reading mixed those two, the Star Wars and Lord of the Rings, and I started moving to Lord of the Rings, and that was also the same time that the movies were coming out, so that also merged my special interest of Legos, because they were Lego The Hobbit sets. Um, so then my next major special interest was Tolkien. I have all the Tolkien books. I have some very very rare old copies 
of some of the books. I have a first edition of the Selmarillion with the misprints and the uh, first casting. It's like one out of like 2,000 books, I think. I have the banned Ace edition of the Fellowship of the Ring. Uh, yeah, I have all sorts of books. My dream is to one day have a book that was signed by Tolkien. Uh, I'm very much still interested in Tolkien and Lord of the Rings. It's not my main interest anymore, but I do still have interest in it. It's just like on the back burner. Um, my current special interest, the bubble that it's in, is video games. I love game history. I know everything about Nintendo history. Uh, like everything like you could ask me anything and I would know it uh did you know gaming I have watched every single video on their channel probably five times uh game theorist was a big thing for me when I was like 14 and 15 you know keep in mind this was 2014 so different YouTube back then I was huge loved Minecraft um I played Minecraft since it was released on mobile I had a Amazon tablet I would play it on back when there was about 24 blocks creative only and the world with only four chunks so I'd like OG <laughs> pocket edition and then in 2015 I got um, Minecraft and it was right after the 1.8 update portal oh my goodness I was in love with portal so much um, I used to run a Wheatley Ask blog on Tumblr. Uh, I had a plush Wheatley that I made myself. My current main game obsession is Splatoon. I love Splatoon. I got Inkling Tattoo. Uh, I have over 3,000 hours in it. I am not very good at it. You could probably easily beat me. I beat some of my friends at it. Who don't play it very often, but not all the time. Even in turf war against noobs, sometimes I lose because my hand-eye coordination is bad and my ability to control things is bad. Yeah, so that's a bit about special interests. I kind of rambled on because special interests as a whole are kind of a special interest for me. Another part of being autistic is sensory problems. Um, if you look at my hair, how do I turn my head? My hair. I don't know if you can see it. I have an undercut. Um, I cannot stand the texture of hair on the back of my neck, so for the longest time I kept my hair super short. Um, and I'm just now growing it out longer. This is as long as it's been since I was probably 13. If I let it down, you can see it's about that long. I dyed it gray because of The Witcher, uh, which is also a current special interest. Uh, but the undercut is because I can't stand the texture of the hair. I do not like dusty things. Uh, dust on anything uh, makes my skin crawl. Uh, Cheetos, Doritos, um, anything like that with dust. If I'm eating chips and they have any sort of powder on them, I have to wipe my hand off after every chip. I'm not joking. Every one, I have to wipe them off. Or sunscreen, it has led to meltdowns when I have been forced to wear sunscreen. Um, I don't like loud sounds at all. I don't like sudden sounds especially. I don't like yelling. Uh, those all make me very anxious. I have had meltdowns in public that were pretty severe. One time at a youth convention, I was 16 at the time, I believe. Um, it was like a rave, basically, like a Christian rave. It was weird. But there were strobe lights, which are very bad for me, and there was a fog machine, which I hate, and it was so loud that I couldn't hear myself think. And I blacked out, and apparently what had happened is I was on the ground, curled into a ball, screaming as loud as I could for some reason. And I screamed so hard that I actually broke a lot of the blood vessels in my face and my face was kind of purple and splotchy for a bit while they healed. Um, 
I was screaming until the music ended and a good deal after that. My friends actually had to like half carry me out of the auditorium to the bus. Um, so I'm sure there are people who saw me and thought I was a freak. Or I would not be surprised if somebody recorded it and it's online somewhere. Um, at library I had a meltdown because of there was loud sound and there was a lot of people. People kept touching me. I don't like to be touched. And I don't like social situations. I don't like large crowds. Um, so I had a meltdown at the library when I was volunteering at a program. A meltdown basically is um, autistic people don't always handle emotions the way non-autistics do. Or holistic is the word. Um, they kind of build up inside of us and then we have to let it all out at once. Uh, so you'll see autistic people who are really happy and jumping around and stuff. That's happy and that's good. That's all the happiness. But the anger and sadness and grief and all of those emotions also get stored up until eventually it all has to come out at once. And it can be very violent. It can be very loud. Um, sometimes autistic people, myself included, will lash out at people around us. Um, with our words, mostly, for me, which, when I'm having a meltdown, after it's finished, I don't remember anything from the meltdown. So often, my friends or family will be very upset with me. And after a meltdown, what an autistic person needs the most is support and love and caring. So, in the past, when I've had a meltdown, and everyone around me was looking at me like I was crazy or someone was crying because of something I had said when I didn't realize what I was saying. Um, that can be really difficult. Another thing that's similar to a meltdown is a shutdown, which is exactly the same cause as a meltdown, but it's all in your head. So if you're having a shutdown, basically you can't move at all, but all that emotion is in your head coming out and it's very scary. It's a bit like sleep paralysis for me. I've only had two shutdowns that I can remember and both of them were terrifying, especially because you can't talk during a shutdown. Uh, so you can't explain to people what's going on. I also tend to drift off. I disassociate a lot. Uh, you might see it in some of my videos um, where I just start stop talking and I just kind of look off into the distance or you'll see that during streams, I'm just sitting there, and my character in the game isn't moving uh, because I'm dissociating a little bit. I have rejection-sensitive dysphoria, which is a trait not all autistics have. Um, it's also a trait in ADHD and uh, many other autism cousins, as they're called. Um, those are uh, disabilities that are similar to autism or that share traits with autism. Uh, what RSD, rejection sensitive dysphoria is, is basically any time something negative happens, my brain magnifies it out of proportion. So if somebody says, um, I don't like the shirt you're wearing, then my brain just freaks out and says, okay, we're going to get rid of this shirt. This person doesn't like me. This person wants me to die. This person hates me. Um, it just magnifies and magnifies. If somebody tells me, hey, I need you to come over here, my first thought is, I'm in trouble, and they're going to yell at me. So a lot of the people I work with, I have to tell them, don't say that to me. Say, I need you to come over and help me move this item. I need you to come into the office early so that I can talk about your schedule next week. Um, I respond very badly to negative comments, to anonymous hate on Tumblr, people getting angry at me, people disagreeing and arguing with me. Uh, even if I'm wrong and I'm recognizing that I'm wrong and I apologize, I still feel terrible afterwards. It leads to self-destructive behavior. Um, ever since I was a little kid, I would bang my head on walls. Um, and hit my legs until they bruised and 
uh, just very self-destructive, which did turn into self-harm when I was a teenager, which is very common in autistic people, unfortunately. Um, I am what's known as a semi-verbal person, meaning sometimes when I'm in public, I can't speak at all. Uh, doing YouTube videos and streams and stuff has helped me with this because I struggle to talk to strangers. Um, as an adult, I'm almost 20 years old. Um, I, my friends always have known me as a very quiet person in public and a very loud person when I'm not in public. Um, I do love to talk and I love to have conversation, but if there's too many people around, I just feel like I can't. I am a bit more quirky than some people you'll meet. You'll see me doing stuff with my hands or um, making sounds. I make a lot of sounds um, randomly in public. I have beeps and meows and trills and little things like that. Um, I'm fidget a lot. I mess with things. I don't make eye contact very well. I I tend to be off kind of in my own world, um, which is kind of a term that the autistic community, we don't really like that term because we're still in this world, but it's the term that people recognize, so that's what I'm going to say. I don't like large crowds. I don't like a whole lot of people being around me. I don't like to be touched at all unless <laughs> he's meowing. Unless there are people that I know and have given consent to touch me. Um, at my church, people who know me will come up and say, can I give you a hug? And I'll say yes, or I'll say no. And they respect that, and it's good. I don't like it when old ladies come up and put their hand on me. It feels like daggers in my skin. It makes me crawl, and I can't... I don't like it at all. I don't like people touching me without permission. Uh, I'm a very picky eater. A lot of the time, I'll just bring my own food if I'm staying at a friend's house, or I'll get fast food on the way, or just not eat because I am so picky. I have a f one friend whose mom knows that I'm picky, and it's I still feel bad because I have to pick through the food and separate it before I eat it and get all the bits of whatever out, and sometimes I have to organize it on my plate, and she knows that it's not me being rude. I'm not intending to be rude about her cooking. It's just that I can't. It's just I have to do that. <laughs> so yeah, those are pretty much my experiences with being autistic and how it affects me and my daily life and just how I am. Uh, if you have any questions about autism, uh, you can put them in the comments, and I will try to answer them to the best of my ability. Uh, hopefully I'll have another gaming video up soon that is our regularly scheduled stuff, but I just felt like I should talk about some stuff, especially because I don't really talk about it online very much. Especially not on my YouTube. Yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for watching to the end, because you wouldn't be seeing this if you hadn't, and this video is probably a lot longer than I intended it to be. So yeah. Um, bye.